The Chicago Bears beat the San Francisco 49ers 10 to 19 in a very, very, very tough matchup. And today we're going to review the offensive line. We're going to start this off with the first sack that the Bears allowed, the very first drive of the game. I keep in mind the weather conditions were absolutely terrible. And in this play, you're going to see left tackle Braxton Jones give up a sack. But you can almost make the argument that there are three guys. It all got there pretty much at the same time. Samsung Ubuckham, Javon Kinlaw, and Nick Boza. All pretty much got there at the same exact time. Now technically, PFF did credit this sack to Braxton Jones. You can pretty much split it in third between whoever you want. Now when you look at Tevin Jenkins specifically on this play, you're going to see he does a good job initially punching Javon Kinlaw. Locking up with him and doing a great job, but as the rep continues, Kinlaw is able to shed and throw Tevin Jenkins to the side swim over him get that right arm onto the back of jenkins and he's able to get in there now the importance of javon kinlaw coming through the middle is sometimes you can get pressure from the outsides like it is possible and the quarterback may be able to step up and potentially climb the pocket now, of course because of the fact that jenkins allows inside pressure there's nowhere for fields to go now at the same time larry borum going up against nick boza probably the toughest matchup to be in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Boza, of course, he does get the chip by the tight end. But Boza's basically going to get to the inside of Borum and just drive him back. Really just carry him backwards. Now, of course, Nick Boza is Nick Boza. He has great technique on this play. The tackle punches, does a good job. Boza gets that left arm on the right arm of that tackle, and he's going to fork that arm up right there. There it is. He's going to fork that arm up, and basically at this point, he has the leverage. And he drives that guy right back into Justin Fields. Now, Braxton Jones, in my opinion, doesn't do a bad job either. Uh, I will say this. He gives the defensive end the outside, and ultimately, having that outside shoulder, he was able to basically get to the quarterback. Now, I would say this, that this is actually not a bad rep. Generally speaking, the quarterback is able to climb the pocket. Now, we are overanalyzing every single play because that is what we do on this channel. Let's get into the next rep. Alrighty guys, jumping forward into this next rep, uh, this is Braxton Jones' second sack that he gave up, at least officially, uh, according to PFF. Uh, this one definitely is on him, and I guess I should just throw it out there really quickly. Now, this video is not going to be just a video of, of negative plays, right? Obviously, anyone that watched the game knows what happened yesterday. In the beginning of the game, the O-line was not as good. As the game went on, they got better and better and better. And their physicality really started to take a toll on the San Francisco 49ers defensive line. Here's the sack. Let's break it down a little bit. Braxton Jones, in my opinion, does not do a good job getting vertical. And his technique here is all over the place. First and foremost, his feet look absolutely terrible. He should not have his right foot in front of his left foot. More than that, at some point in a rep, you have to be able to anchor down. And Jones does not. He just gets driven right back into the quarterback. You know, the second you make contact with a guy... At this point right here, you need to anchor. You need to take that contact on, anchor down, and Jones doesn't do that. Jones is going to get driven. He gets off balance, and Nick Bose is able to get to the inside. Now, Fields does do a good job at least trying to step up into the pocket as both right tackle and the expectation should be the left tackle take their guys upfield. Now, of course, it doesn't happen. This is only one rep. Uh, and do understand we're going to get into a lot of positive reps, but I do want to get those two sacks out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump forward into the next rep. Now, the Bears early on did not have a lot of success running the football, and a big part of that was because the Niners absolutely loaded the box. Generally speaking, they had eight guys around the line of scrimmage most of the time. Of course, in this situation, you got three wide receivers in the game. The Niners should be in some sort of dime defense with more safeties, more corners, and they're not. They're really just keeping one guy deep. And this is the treatment Justin Fields will get throughout this season until he can prove that he can successfully and effectively complete balls downfield. Now, I didn't want to throw that out there because as the Bears run the ball, they're not picking up a ton of yards, especially early on. They weren't. And we'll get into some of the positive plays here in just a second. Check this next play out right here. You guys are going to see that this play pops for a massive gain. The offensive line does an absolutely beautiful job on this play right here. Let's break this play down. Now, jumping right into the play, uh, you're going to see that Sam Mustafer is the first line of defense on this play. He's going to basically seal off Fred Warner here. Uh, you're going to see Cody White here do a great job getting to the inside of Greenlaw. And then basically, you got a backside seal. Braxton Jones does a good job getting to the inside here. 
and the running back's going to basically squeeze right through this gap right here and he picks up a massive chunk of yards you guys can watch it and then we'll slow it down and we'll get into every individual block because these type of plays in my opinion started popping as the game started going on the center does a great job on fred warner here he pushes him outwards which ultimately allows that gap to break and then even more so than that, if you guys watch the left guard here, watch the left guard get to the inside and seal off Greenlaw, right? The fact that Greenlaw doesn't recognize this play, the fact that the left guard starts to go this way, that's a terrible job by Greenlaw. He should have recognized this quicker, but that's a great job by Cody White here to seal it off. Now, ultimately, White here probably has the block that allows this play to really pop because he gets to the inside of Greenlaw, seals him off. Even Braxton Jones, like Javon Kinlaw is playing that four-eye technique to the inside shoulder of Jones, and he's able to get inside, turn him, and seal it off. That's a great job by the entire offensive line. Even Jenkins as well as Borum on this side, both guys, although it's simpler, seal off the front side guys here. This is just a really nice design, and this, pl this play popped right here. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Alrighty, guys, jumping forward into this next play, I want you guys to check this play out and I really want to break it down because there's parts of this play that you may not realize is happening. For example, this play is actually designed for Justin Fields to roll out to his left. And of course, that doesn't happen because he didn't expect this, this slot player to blitz. And Fields ends up running it back to his right. And he basically just picks up a yard on this play. But I'm going to break this play down because the left tackle does a great job baiting the defensive end. And I'm going to get into exactly what that means here in just a second. But uh, I do want to draw this play up really quickly for you guys because there's a lot that's going on in this play. First and foremost, this wide receiver right here is running this outpost into the back of the end zone. And he is the guy that this entire play is designed for. And this play would have been a touchdown. I'm going to let you guys just watch it really quickly. And we're going to focus in on just that one wide receiver. And again, this play, in my opinion right here, is a touchdown. If Justin Fields is able to get out of the pocket and if the Niners did not call that blitz, uh, you guys can see the receiver here at the top of your screen. Uh, he has a step on basically the only two guys that are in coverage. And of course, if Fields is able to put the ball somewhere back here, this is a touchdown. Now, just a second ago, I mentioned that Fields is trying to roll to the top of your screen or to his left. And I also mentioned that left tackle Braxton Jones is baiting the defensive end and we're going to talk about that now of course this play is 100 percent designed by the coaching staff this ha patrick mahomes josh allen these guys do these type of plays all the time and let me break it down for you so you guys know exactly what i mean on this play right here so as you guys see the motion go by here uh, one of the things you're going to see with braxton jones is he's going to 45 degree set this now when you 45 degree set naturally speaking you are going to give the defensive end the inside. And you can bait the defensive end if you set far enough. And in this play right here, as the play begins, you're going to literally see just that. Braxton Jones is going to 45 degree set. The defensive end is going to go to the inside. And Jones gives him the inside. He's actually going to seal him off to the inside here. He's sealed off. Now at this point, Fields is going to flip his hips and try to get out to the left. Because that entire situation was expected. Braxton Jones wanted 56 to go to the inside. The one thing he didn't realize is that this guy may end up coming off the edge. And that guy basically stops this entire play from happening. But it is interesting, and I did want to point it out really quickly, that plays like this are designed. All right, there's plays for Fields to flip his hips and roll out and get to the outside. And then they have a back post coming uh, from the slot receiver, right? Uh, so I did want to point that out. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Jumping forward into this next rep, check out Larry Borum, the right tackle. He's going to do a great job on this defensive end. He's going to snatch him. Uh, first and foremost, great job getting out there. Great rep, honestly, in my opinion. One of the things that I think is very important as a tackle is to change up your sets. Instead of always getting vertical, uh, sometimes you got to take the fight to these defensive linemen. You got to go directly at them. In this play right here, Borum does a great job closing the space right out of his stance. After he closes down that space, you guys are going to see uh, he's going to get 56. And he's going to snatch him downwards right there. And 56 falls to the ground. That's a great job, man. Uh, as a tackle, to be able to snatch, I think, is very important. And then, of course, he just jumps kind of on top of him. That's a really solid rep right there by Larry Borum. Uh, I think I saw somewhere on Twitter that Borum was the highest 
highest-rated tackle or the highest-rated offensive lineman. And I see why. The guy was very stout yesterday. And truth be told, I really... Was, I really thought that he would be the one offensive lineman that could potentially struggle. I really thought from right guard to left tackle, you guys would be really solid. And honestly, I think the overall offensive line really did a great job. You know, it's crazy to me because the media talking heads, you know, the Stephen A. Smiths and the Colin Cowards, they're not talking too much about this offensive line. They're not saying how, you know, quote unquote, terrible it is today. It's a really nice rep right there. Let's go ahead and get into the next play. On this play, I want to highlight tight end Ryan Griffin. He does a great job here against number 94. I believe that second round pick, Drake Jackson, and he basically eliminates him. He does a fantastic job. Now, of course, this is an offense line video, but he does a great job getting on top of him, getting that right arm to the inside, really removing any leverage that Jackson could have had or number 94, I should say. And he takes him down that if you can remove one guy with your tight end, the type of pocket you can create for your quarterback when fields has a clean pocket he's shown that he can deliver the ball and you guys see right here that's a beautiful throw beautiful job by the entire offensive line go ahead and get to the next rep all right you guys as you guys can see at this point in the video we are now entering the fourth quarter with 15 minutes left and this is when the fun begins so if you guys are still watching the video big shout out to you guys and definitely let me know in the comments below that you guys are still watching this video you have this this crack toss power run concept by the offensive line great job blocking it let's break this play down now in my opinion the two key blocks to start this play is going to be the guy that comes into a motion off the left of your screen and he's going to block down on this defensive end braxton jones is then going to pull the left guard is going to let this guy who's in the uh, inside technique the two eye left guard's going to get up and cut off fred warner at the same time the center has a very difficult block He's blocking someone in that two-eye technique. Sam Mustfer has to get to this guy and cut him off. And let's just watch these blocks as they kind of unfold. And we'll we'll watch them in slow motion. Because I think it's very important. When we got plays like this and the blockers do their job and the play hits for seven, eight yards, especially on a type of day that it was yesterday in Chicago, uh, first and foremost, the center does a great job getting the, the snap off, taking a hard left step to his left. And look at the reach block right here. Look at this block right here to cut off this defensive tackle in that two-eye technique, and he sticks with him. And look at that lane. Like, right now, if the running back wants to, he can cut it right in between here and pick up four to five yards. Obviously, he's going to continue this path to the outside, which is the correct thing to do. As he continues it, just look at the lanes that end up opening up for him. Now, I do want to point out number 65, Cody White here, because he takes a great angle on Fred Warner. He's going to let his guy go. He gets a vertical, takes like that 45 degree run set, and he's going to basically get up to Fred Warner, make contact, and basically just let Fred Warner go where he's going. He basically pushes him out. Of course, Montgomery cuts it underneath. Even Braxton Jones does a great job. Uh, you get the crack block by number 13 here. That's a great job. Jones gets out wide, takes the widest guy. That's his responsibility on this crack toss play. This is just a really nice job by that front side, even on the back side. Uh, it, it's a little bit simpler, but 62 does have to still cut off Greenlaw here. And of course, 75 has to cut off his guy. Very nice job by the offensive line. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. I want you guys to watch the right guard here. He does a great job double teaming with the right tackle. And then he sees Fred Warner fill his gap and boom, he puts him down. That right there is such a nice block by Lucas Patrick. This is why Heyman Jenkins were switching. Not only do you keep both guys fresh, but you're able to rotate and kind of change things up a little bit. And I want you guys to keep this in mind. This concept right here is a new concept that's coming into the league. The Raiders just did this as well with their right guard and right tackle, where they were swapping in seven guys back and forth throughout the entire game yesterday. So I don't know if we'll see more of this. I'm going to say we will. Of course, Patrick does a great job on this play. And it's these three to four yard runs right here, these tough physical yards where you're really able to set the tone. If you guys have watched my previous videos, you guys know that in my Braxton Jones and Tevin Jenkins video that I literally just broke down recently. I said in that video about 15, 16 minutes in that if the Niners think that they're going to come in here and just walk over the Bears, they have no idea what's coming to them. This offensive line is a physical group. They're underrated. They're the underdogs. And they proved it yesterday. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Alrighty guys, jumping into this next play, 
Uh, this is the touchdown pass here by Justin Fields. As you guys know, the, the Niners were playing only one safety deep. Right? They weren't showing Fields that respect early on. And as the Bears started running the football, what ended up happening was the Niners would go all in on these play actions. Look at this. All these guys are on the line of scrimmage. And you basically have a guy running open here. You have another guy running open here. That's basically what happens when you only have one safety right you keep one safety deep a team starts running the football guys are going to bite on those play actions and of course from an offensive line perspective they do a good job they keep fields clean long enough that he's able to deliver a pass that's a great job right there let's get into the next rep as the game's coming to an end the bears really started dominating on the offensive line and i think a lot of this could carry on into week two check this run out right here by herbert he picks up a massive chunk of yards and that's right there on literally the inside hip of Tevin Jenkins here, who does a great job. You guys see him in the right tackle move, and they're able to open up a nice lane right here. Not sure what confused Fred Warner, but he was way out of his gap. It was a really solid job by the entire offensive line, really getting that movement, really pushing people, really creating that space. Even the tight end here comes and is able to wham block on Boza here. And of course, Boza doesn't want any of that. And Herbert picks up a nice chunk of yards. Either way, man, the Bears really did a great job on the offensive line. From left tackle to right tackle, everyone got involved. And I know this video wasn't one guy specific. I hope you guys did enjoy the format. I did want to kind of just talk about all the guys in general. You know, the rain really impacts you. O-line, D-line, uh, running backs, linebackers, right? It really makes it hard. So I did want to just break this down just kind of generally about the offensive line. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I do plan to do more Bears content on this channel. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.